And Kellyanne Conway, Counselor of the President, is standing by. She joins us live on this Tuesday morning. Kellyanne, good morning to you. Hey, Beautiful Kelly. day there. Good morning. Yeah. It is gorgeous. Come and visit. Thank you. Uh, listen, I think you've got some uh, folks coming over to visit to the White House. Um, I know a number of Republican senators have been invited to hear details about the President's new immigration plan that Jared Kushner has been working on. What can you tell us about it? Well, we're delighted they're coming to the White House, just as we were very happy 12 Democrats from the Senate and the House came last week to talk about infrastructure. That's what we work on here. This president continues to make great progress and strides on the major public policy issues of the day. It's why his Gallup approval rating is at an all-time high of 46 percent, two points higher than President Obama's at this point uh, in his presidency in April 2011, and as he went on for re-election. But uh, Jared Kushner and others have been working assiduously for quite a while now on a big immigration package. Obviously, border security is top of mind for this president. I took note, uh, that great note, that since January, Democrats are now 17 points more likely to refer to what's happening at the southern border as a, quote, crisis. Remember that it was in January that Schumer and Pelosi went on primetime television following the, pre the president's Oval Office address and said this is a manufactured crisis. People in their own party now increasingly think yep. that they believe what they see that we have a true crisis. So border security, top of mind. But also, uh, the president will be considering a merit-based immigration system. He put The president put together a 70-point plan and submitted it to Congress in October of 2017. So anybody who seems surprised that this president wants to end the visa lottery system, end chain migration, have a merit-based immigration system, a deal with DACA as he can, and certainly continue to so secure that's on the table. border. So DACA will be on it the table? Be. I don't okay. want to get ahead of it, but it could be. We'll see. Um, obviously, the president was willing to make a deal on that in the cabinet room in January of 2018. The Democrats walked away from the table. They pretended that the 35 or 25 million for border security was real. There's a difference between allocation really? and appropriation, and they know it. How are they going? How's he going to get this passed, though? Because you've got Democrats that are completely against this, and they control the House. Well, they, then Ainsley, they have to stop pretending that they want to reform our immigration laws right now. We have a couple of judges across this country in charge of the nation's immigration laws. That just can't be. We're all co-equal branches of government. And if you've got a few judges out there giving us things like the Flores decision, and Congress refuses to fix Flores, they, they refuse to fix uh, TVPRA, which is allowing so many of these kids just to be smuggled and recycled. In fact, there was a story just yesterday that somebody paid $130 for a boy to, to grab his hand and come over with him because they know and they admit that adult knows and adult male certainly knows if you grab the hand of a minor, a boy or a girl, you have a better chance of getting into this country. These children are being recycled. A story yesterday about a Guatemalan boy, eight years old, being put back on a plane several times and recycled. Right. That has to stop. And Congress can change that by just tweaking, fixing the TV power, by just fixing the Flores decision. They refuse to act. So all of that is coming to them. If they're serious about immigration reform, they should come to the table and do something. Same thing with infrastructure, drug pricing. These wildly bipartisan, I should say nonpartisan issues that are starving for bipartisan support. This president's ready. He'll meet with anyone. They can come anytime. Okay. You saw that last week at the infrastructure meeting. All right. So uh, some Republicans are going, senators are going to come to the White House to talk about immigration. A couple of Republican senators sent uh, a letter to the inspector general of the intel community essentially saying, hey, uh, we know you're looking into the FISA abuses, but are you looking into these leaks from the intel community uh, to members of the press? Because, and if you're not, why aren't you? It's a great question. Obviously, the press has it big old insatiable appetite for investigations. We just went through two years of one that cost taxpayers $30 million, and it should be seen as the definitive, authoritative, exhaustive, expensive, conclusive investigation. It's called the Mueller Report, and it's 448 pages long, and it's been released to the public for quite a while now. Um, so let's see where this all started. Right. What is everybody afraid of, I would ask them? What do you have to hide? Listen, Bob, if, if we, right. How Bob, did this all start? And it's important to do that. I think that Bill Barr, the attorney general, made clear that perhaps there is an investigation to at least eight of these leaks. But I, for one, um, as a citizen of this country, I want to know if intelligence officers were leaking information to the press. Why not? Uh, we'll have to see who the leakers were and the leakies. And I, I tell you, I think a few of them look a little nervous. Who do you these think days. they are? Because if you if you read this latest text message from Struck to Page.
It was December 2016, but it was one of the ones that was just released. He said, think our sisters have begun leaking like mad, scorned and worried and political. They're kicking into overdrive. He works and Lisa works worked for the FBI. So who are their sisters? Is it CIA? Is it others in the intel community? Hey, Ainsley, I don't know, but I am willing to find out because anybody who says, well, then isn't this over? See, they can't have it both ways. You have people saying, OK, then it's over. Why are we going to look at that? Mm -hmm. And then they want to continue to mm -hmm. have these investigations, subpoenas, contempt hearings, and all the nonsense that attends to it. Uh, so they can't have it both ways. And look, I can probably find 20, oh. we can probably find $25 million well, and wait two years to but, investigate But I do have leaks. hope. I do have hope because Friday yes. the New York Times picked up a story we've been covering for 18 yes. months. There you and go. they're realizing this is a story that they're going to be left behind unless they join in. i got to ask you, will the president go out of his way and actually block Bob Mueller from coming up in May or June and testifying? Or would he just rather he don't? Where does it stand right now? Well, the president has said he should not testify. I know a lot of people read the word block in there, which I didn't see. Uh, he said he should not testify, and his point is very simple. Bob Mueller's report and investigation is definitive and conclusive. And as Mitch McConnell is going to say, uh, our, our majority leader in the, House, in the Senate is going to say later today, case closed, that uh, Putin and the Russians see us see us still arguing about mm -hmm. Russian interference in election that did not exist. And it's sure if the interference existed, right. But read the whole Mueller report. Read volume but, one. So folks, he won't it, block it, Kellyanne. He won't block him, but he'd rather he don't. Well, he's saying that Bob Mueller has already spoken. This investigation no, is concluded. It's a lot, well, and he's also saying, what is there left to say? What is there left to do? Mm -hmm. okay. and, and, the, and the fact is that Mr. Mueller, if Mr. Mueller could have, Director Mueller could have referred for indictment, if he could have charged people with a crime, including the president, the president's family, the president's advisors, the president's associates, he would have done okay. so. The job of a prosecutor is not to use the word exoneration. It is to refer or decline a referral of an indictment. Right. That word didn't even need to be used. And so uh, what, what, what else would Mr. Mueller add to this? And I think the Democrats... Look, they can go do what they want, but they look really ridiculous still investigating an investigation that's over. Kellyanne, you're on the North Lawn. On the other side of the uh, West Wing is the uh, Rose Garden last night in a rare late, uh, late afternoon, early evening uh, ceremony. The president presented the Medal of Freedom to Tiger Woods, uh, talked about, uh, you know, his highs and lows and amazing career. We were curious about your reaction to a Baltimore Sun headline. They write, plenty of athletes are refusing to stand with Trump, not Tiger Woods. And then on the op-ed page, they say, we wish Mr. Woods would have taken a stand against hatred and declined the award given the racial and ethnic rift Mr. Trump has widened and exploited in the country since taking office, dot, dot, dot. Mr. Woods has made his choice, and part of his legacy will be embracing a man who incited bigotry and racism. Actually, his legacy will now include the Presidential Medal of Freedom, which is the highest honor a civilian can receive. And it's been uh, conferred by President Trump and other Trump and, and other presidents on a number of athletes. In fact, uh, a couple of months ago, the president conferred it on seven Americans, including Roger Staubach, for, former quarterback mm -hmm. of the Dallas Cowboys, who also has been a great charitable member, a, a civic, uh, a civic-minded uh, generous benefactor in his community. Um, Alan Page, who was a distinguished athlete, but also judge. is an African American judge in Minnesota, I believe. And, so what and about Babe the Ruth backlash? Is an icon. Uh, Kellyanne, do you know oh, this that is. Comes from, listen, who cares? Honestly, uh, respectfully, who cares what the Baltimore Sun has to say about Tiger Woods and the president in the Rose Garden yesterday? And here's why. They, they find negative and invective in even uh, the grit and determination and overcoming injury and, and, and personal challenges and, uh, and age uh, over time. And Tiger Woods is a great American uh, story of grit and determination and the underdog prevailing again. Um, but look, you know, leave it to some. Uh, who are honestly always in a bad mood about something to try to ruin the day for Tiger Woods. I don't think that Tiger Woods will allow that. Uh, we're certainly not going to allow that here at the White House. Uh, he, was, he was more than happy to accept that award. Uh, many people are, and the president will continue to distinguish great Americans for their contributions to society in many All ways. Right.
Kellyanne Conway, North Lawn. The, in the Rose Garden today, I've got to say, it's a one-year anniversary at Be Best, the First Lady's oh, incredible right. platform. She's got three pillars. She's been pushing them forward. Tremendous progress on all three pillars, and particularly one that I'm uh, privileged to work on with her, the opioid crisis. This First Lady has raised awareness and funding and action on neonatal abstinence syndrome, these babies, 150 born every day in this country, struggling for those first breaths. And through the CRIB Act, we're, we're helping the moms and the newborns stay together. Uh, she's, she's addicted, the baby's born chemically dependent, but more and more of them are surviving that and thriving, right. and it's due in large part to this First Lady's efforts. It is such an important program, and we're going to be covering it live later today. Thank Kelly, you. Kellyanne, thank you.